Salt Lake City to our formal meeting. Before we get started, I just want to uh, let you know, council members are, did not get a dinner break, so they're still eating. We're, we will still listen, and I think the eating will be done quickly. So um, I'll go through the, the opening issues. Okay, so welcome to today's, count, to today's meeting. We are happy to have you here, whether in per person, on Zoom, or watching on one of our live feeds. We hope you'll continue to join us in whichever manner you feel most comfortable. We are starting today at 6 p.m. because there's a truth in taxation public hearing at 7 p.m. Uh, thank you for participating. The first item, the next item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. So take your last bite and swallow it, and we will then have the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you again to everyone who is joining us. Before we move through our agenda, I want to mention and remind everyone about our rules of decorum, which are in place to ensure our meetings move along well and to help everyone feel comfortable sharing their comments. A full copy of the rules of decorum are available at the door and our staff will post the link in Zoom. But basically, please be respectful and um, no clapping or cheering so that everyone feels comfortable if they have opposing viewpoints, etc. Uh, this brings us to item A4, which is an approval of minutes. We're looking for approval of the work session meeting minutes of May 9th, 2023, June 1st, 2023, and June 6th, 2023, as well as formal meeting minutes of April 18th, 2023, and June 13th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Wharton and a second from Council Member Pui. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none. I will roll. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. That passes six to zero with council member um, Petro absent. Okay, so that brings us to section B. Section B is public hearings, um, and this is public here. Uh, public items that the public that we we're asking the public to weigh in on. If you would like to comment on a public hearing today. We are accepting those comments both in person and online via Zoom. The council has been informed of accommodation requests during public comment tonight and welcomes comments from all constituents. If you need to speak with our staff, please select Isaac Canedo from the list of participants. If you need to, you can also raise your hand in Zoom to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill on our staff will be calling those who wish to comment based on order on the order when we receive the comment names, if you are on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. So our only public hearing is item B1, which is regarding a grant application for the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Sylvia Richards from Council staff will give us a brief introduction before we ta start taking public comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The city applies for and receives grants which help to support and fund some city programs. Each grant application is reviewed and then receives a public hearing which gives the public and the council an opportunity to comment on them. Tonight there is one grant and that is the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force and if um, funded that would provide over police overtime and police training as well as forensic computers and that is all thank you mr. chair thank you Sylvia um, before we okay nope we already did that uh, Taylor from council staff will read us the names of anyone registered to comment Taylor go ahead with our thank first comment. you mr. chair there is no one registered to speak to this item okay is there anyone present in person that would like to speak to this item Okay, seeing none, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council close the public hearing and refer item B1 to a future consent agenda for action. Second. Okay, motion from Councilmember Dugan, second from Councilmember Pui. Any discussion to this, I, to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously with all seven council members present. This brings us now to uh, section C of our agenda, which is potential action items. 
And we item C1 is an ordinance about the site distance triangle text amendment. Mr. Chair. I will look for a motion. I move that the council adopt the ordinance. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Pui, a second from Council Member Dugan. Just, um, I have some a question on this. Do we're clear that this ordinance has some of the adjustments that we requested in our, I, I believe Brian Mer said that we did, but are we confident that this has the most updated things that we requested, which I think are the issue is from, or like 30 inches up to seven feet or something like that. And that there's an alternative, that the, like the safety, whatever can make an alternative way to make sure it's safe. The, Means and method. All, the, all the, and method. the administration could approve. Those are both in there. Okay, that's my only question. Any other comment, any question to this motion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Any opposed say nay. That passes seven to zero. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. If I could just get a clarification. The ordinance that you were mentioning with updates was the ordinance of originally submitted with the transmittal, correct? Or did the council have updates to it? I believe we made the changes they to the heights. Updates? And okay. those two things that we just, I just mentioned, I think are, are changed. Thank you. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cindy Lou. Okay. All right. Uh, item C2 is a resolution about the capital improvement program projects. Mr. Chair? Yes. I Council move that the Council approve a resolution adopting the capital improvement program project specific allocations for fiscal year 2024 as shown in the attached exhibit A funding blog. And I further move. And it's intent of the council to request that applications to the capital improvement program for traffic calming projects should be included in the livable streets program data driven process to standardize the prioritization process across funding streams. Second. Yes. I have a motion from council member Pui, a second from council member Wharton. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Say nay. That passes seven to zero. All right, we are moving on to, did I miss anything? Nope. Um, moving on to section D, which is the comment section. The first is D1, which are questions to the mayor from the city council. Are there any questions to the mayor? Mayor Mendenhall, thank you for being here today and for all the hard work you're doing. Okay, the next is D2, which is comments to the City Council from the public. So this is the general comments portion of our agenda. As a reminder for those in Zoom, Isaac Canedo from our staff will moderate our Zoom and will message you with any questions about your registration. Staff is handling many tasks, so if possible, please limit messages to just technical issues or minimal information updates. If you do need to speak with our staff, please select Isaac, spelled I-S-A-A-C, Canedo from the list of participants. If you need to, please raise your hand in Zoom to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill from our staff will be calling the names of those who wish to comment based on the order of registration or receive comment cards. If you are on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you're unable to finish your comment, please send the rest via email, mail, or call our office. Taylor, can you please begin with our first general comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are two people registered for general comment. The first will be Katie Pappas, followed by Cindy Cromer. Katie, you may now unmute. Hi, can you hear me? It's a little bit, uh, speak a little loud if you could. Okay. My name is Katie Pappas and I live in Salt Lake City. Is that better? Yes. I'd like to comment about the warehouse development currently taking place in the Northwest Quadrant Inland Port area. My dad and I drove out there on Monday to see what development was occurring and hoping to find something other than warehouses, but that is mostly what we found. There were multiple large warehouses in various stages of development 
most with truck docks numbering well over 100. One had over 350. Other than at Amazon, only a few of the docks were being used. There were completed vacant warehouses for lease and more new ones being constructed. They were massive. All this incentivized by tax increment subsidies through the Utah Inland Port Authority, money that should be going to our schools, is quite a dilemma. If the warehouses are vacant and underutilized, it's a huge waste of tax dollars. But if all those thousands of truck docks are filled, we won't be able to breathe. I know that Salt Lake City will soon be negotiating with the Utah Inland Port Authority to get the agreed upon traffic, human health, and community impact studies to determine this development's impact on Westside communities. UEFA has so far failed to provide the data needed to enable the traffic study, which needs to occur before the other studies can be started. Ideally, development should be stopped until these studies are complete. The next best option would be a detailed, updated UEFA business plan for Northwest Quadrant development. This could be based on current building trends in that area and taking into account any known future projects. This would provide fairly reliable data for the traffic study. I appreciate Salt Lake City's engagement and efforts to minimize impact on area residents. Requiring UEPA to provide needed information as soon as possible will allow these studies to proceed. The results must be available before it is too late to Time. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Next will be Cindy Cromer, followed by Bernie Hart. Cindy is here in person. Thank you. Um, I'm still Cindy Cromer. Um, I have comments to make. They're circling like planes over a crowded airport. The RMF 30 modifications, which in went into effect in April, the appropriation of what little park space we have in the core of the city by ambitious developers, the retirement of a remarkable member of the Planning Commission. But those topics all have to wait because we just had another fire in Central City. This one a week and a half ago was near 700 East and 300 South in the Central City Historic District and damaged a house which has been vacant for a very long time. The neighbors call it the pink house. It's one of a kind. It's not duplicated elsewhere in the Historic District. The pink house is one of five vacant buildings within a block. One of the five is next to my own investment. That one has been vacant for 18 years. Reporters refer to these buildings as abandoned. They are most certainly not abandoned. They are the victims of relentless speculation and the city's failure to do much of anything about their deterioration. Some members of the council have repeated what city employees tell you about the number of boarded buildings. Buildings are not counted as boarded until they are completely boarded. The fines do not begin until then. There are not 150 something vacant units of housing in the city. There are 150 something completely boarded buildings that city employees track. The city has no idea how many vacant units of housing there are. Based on walking in Central City and the Bryant neighborhoods, I will tell you that there are thousands of vacant units on top of the number being used illegally as short-term rentals. The city does nothing to get these vacant units back into operation. Owners continue to receive the residential exemption on their property taxes. There are no fines until the property is completely boarded. Based on my observation, we don't have a housing shortage. We have a shortage of affordable housing, and we probably always will. We have a shortage of occupied housing, which I believe could be met by moving vacant housing into occupancy and eliminating short-term rentals, except in zones which allow hotels. Thank you. Next will be Bernie Hart, who is here in person. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I'm a little bit out of order here. The schedule tonight is just, I'm too old to deal with all this jumping around. Uh, but I did want to address the grant application for the uh, Crimes Against Children and uh, the policing uh, uh, in Salt Lake City has been a concern of mine for a number of years. And one of my main concerns is money and money that goes to the police department uh, for programs and uh, with all good intentions on everybody's part. But at the end of the day, nothing seems to change. We fund programs, uh, shootings, behaviors, uh, police simulations. I've been part of that. And uh, trying to improve our police department to function at a high level to meet the needs of our citizens. But nothing seems to change. 
we seem to have some of the same problems over and over again, and I believe that's because of a lack of oversight. When we fund something, we should expect some results, different results, but we don't have a way of monitoring the results. Do the programs we fund, people, when we train people for different things in the police department to improve the police department, is change happening? Is our policing force getting better? I don't think we know. And that doesn't do anyone any good. The citizens of Salt Lake City, the taxpayers, the funding, and it's just a series of bad practices. I don't want to say bad, but inefficient practices that I think could be improved on. Thank you. This application could be a way of starting that process. Thank you very much. That was the final registered commenter. Is there anyone else here in public that would like to speak during general comment? Okay, seeing that there are none, we are moving on to section E, which is new business, of which there's none. Section F is unfinished business, and we are on item F1, which is an ordinance about an economic development revolving loan fund for Levity LLC. I will look for a motion. I move that the council, Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt the ordinance approving a $100,000 loan for Levity LLC for the economic, from the Economic Development Loan Fund. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Pui, a second from Councilmember Dugan. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously with all seven council members present. Um, this moves. Okay, that was the only thing in unfinished business, so we're now onto our consent agenda. I'll look for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion from Council Member Wharton, second from Council Member Petro. Any discussion of this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously with all seven council members present. And with that, our Council formal meeting is adjourned. However, I'll just note that we do have a limited formal meeting at 7 o'clock, which is for our truth and taxation hearing. And we need to start right at 7 o'clock. So make sure we're back a little bit before that. And that, with that, we're adjourned.